Hello YouTube, Dobro den. I'm back with another installment of my memories of Macedonia, but this time we're going to do something that's really, really traditional and one of the nation's probably the most popular dish, which is called kebabcina. And kebabcina are little finger-sized kebabs, and they're very popular in the whole Balkan region. Some countries call them cevapi, like in um, uh, Serbia and uh, uh, Croatia. Um, some call them kebab. So in Macedonia, we call them kebab chino, and we're going to show you how we put those together. We're also going to make two Macedonian salads today, one which is really, really popular, probably the most popular in Macedonia, called Shopska Salata. And it's really simple. It's just cucumber, um, tomatoes, um, parsley, and uh, just uh, some apple cider vinegar, no oil, salt and pepper. And you can, if you want to make it a Makedonsko Shopska Salata, put in some hot peppers in there too which I think we might do. Um, we're also going to make another salad called Taratur, which is a thick yogurt with cucumber shredded in there, lots of garlic, um, chopped walnuts, and a drizzle of olive oil. It's really, really good and tasty. But today, I have a special guest, a friend of mine who's come down to the big city to help out today, my friend Michelle. I'm not going to say how long we've known each other because then it will age us. So that's between us, OK? So Michelle's come down. So why don't you come and say hello to everyone, Michelle? Hello, everyone. <laughs> she literally says hello to everyone. So, Michelle, this is your first time cooking Macedonian food? Yes, it is. And you're excited to cook Macedonian food? Very, very excited. Okay, so say kebabcina. Kebabcina. And, and what are we going to serve with the kebabcina? We have fries. Chips, chips mm -hmm. and we also have stuffed hot peppers. Well, they're not stuffed, they're grilled. Oh, grilled, sorry. And we call them luti paparki. Say that. Luti paparki. You're getting better. Okay, so we're going to come back and we're going to show you everything that we need to do and everything that we need to get to get our kebab china started. We're going to start with the kebab china. See you in a bit. Hey everyone, so Michelle and I are back with our ingredients and we're going to start off with the ingredients that you're going to need to make kebab china. What kebab china is, is basically little finger sized kebabs and they're really popular all over the Balkans and in different countries like Croatia or Serbia they call them something different they're known as uh, cevapi, kebapi in Macedonia they just happen to be known as kebabcina and how they're served depends uh, on region to region as well um, I know Serbians like to put it in a big crusty bun um, with some salad and onions and we, we eat ours basically on their own with a side of chips usually and a salad, grilled peppers. So Michelle, how much we have, what do we have here first of all? Okay, we have one kilo of pork right here and one kilo of beef here. So approximately how many pounds would that be each? It would be about two and a half pounds each. Okay, and, and we're using lean today, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, what I've done also in the past, if you want to keep this low cal and low fat, you can use ground chicken or ground turkey or a combination. Okay, and then we have here, Michelle. We have two large onions minced, and we also have four cloves of garlic minced here. Okay, and then our spices. We have paprika here. To taste. To taste however you like. And then the next one is the hot chili pepper flakes to taste as well. Crushed chili. And this is also optional. You don't have to add this one in. Um, we're adding it in because I'm not going to put pepper. And I like them a little spicy. And then we also have sea salt to taste as well. Right. Um, you can add or as little or as much as you like of these uh, spices. Uh, start off low and then what you can do is make a sample one um, fry it up or grill it up and taste it and then you'll know if you need to adjust your meat mixture. So we'll be right back and show you what we do next. Hey Michelle? Yes we will. Ciao! Hey everyone, Michelle and I are back with you and what we've gone ahead and done is um, as you can see we've mixed up our mince, that's the pork and the beef. We've added in all of our spices and that really finely, finely minced um, onion and garlic. Now if you don't like the onion and garlic to go in here raw, you can saute it up first, it's um, up to you. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've already rolled one out to show you kind of how it looks. They look like, like, like I said, little fingers. The ends are usually straight, um, blunt, as you want to say. This is actually um, bigger than what it's going to turn out to be, obviously, because they do shrink in cooking. So that it's, you know, like I said, about the size of a finger. So I'm just going to show you real quick how we go about rolling them. 
um, <clears throat> get yourself a pretty good size of mints. You don't have to, you know, use a whole handful, obviously. And you're just going to roll between your hand. And then you can give it a roll like this, like you're making a, a meatball. And if you have too much, you can rip off the excess. You can make the blunt. It does take some time, but it's well worth it. Get some friends, get a bottle of wine, chit chat, roll out your kebab cheese, set them on um, wax paper or, or a piece of uh, cling film or tin foil, and do them in layers. So if you fill up this one, put another sheet on top and so forth. When you're done with these, you're going to just pop them in the freezer just to firm them up. Don't freeze them. You just want them firm. Um, or you can stick them in the fridge. While I'm showing you the rolling, I just wanted to show you this little apparatus here. And this is something I bought in Macedonia. And basically, it's like a press. And you would just fill your mints in here. And as you can see, there are how many holes? One, two, three, four, six, seven. So you get seven out of here. Then you put the top on. I'm not really showing you, am I? Oh, there we go. And you push. Michelle likes that part. <laughs> and then your, your kebab cheese will come out of the holes here. They're really narrow. I don't think they come out as good. Some of them break halfway through. So if you find a little apparatus like this that will make your life easier, by all means, go ahead and use it if you don't want to sit here and roll. I've also seen a, a technique where they've gotten a plastic um, um, soda bottle, um, Tudor bottle, and they've cut the very, very bottom of it, filled the soda bottle with your mints, and then squeezed it, and it's come out the spout, the end. Or you can make one big long rope and just cut them in the sizes that you need. But like I said, make them a little bit bigger, bigger than your finger because they are going to make down. This is probably a little bit too. He can probably stand to be uh, sized down a little more. But anyways, you get my idea. And Michelle and I will be back and show you what we do when all of these are rolled. Say bye, Michelle. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. What we've done now is we've taken the meat mixture and we've rolled it into the nice finger size pieces here. And we have three layers here. And we're just gonna put them in the freezer to have them firm up a bit. And then they'll be easier to cook and grill. Exactly, there's three layers of this. I think we got something like 50 some odd kebab cheese, didn't we? That's right. Okay, so these are gonna go um, traditionally on a, a charcoal grill. I don't have a charcoal grill. I do have a barbecue, however. So you can put these on the barbecue as well. Or if you don't have a barbecue and you're inside, no problem. Just get one of these grill pans. And it's just my well-used grill pan. It is clean. I know it looks gnarly, but it is clean. So these are going to go on the grill pan. And these are going to chill out, as Michelle said. And then we're going to start with our salad. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make taratur. And what taratur is, is um, a salad. In Macedonia they call it a salad. Maybe in North America we might call it something like an appetizer. It may look like a dip. Um, it's really a thick, thick yogurt. And we're going to add some cucumber, really finely minced garlic to your taste. It should be a lot, but not overpowering. You really want that garlic taste, but you don't want it just to be all garlic. And then at the end, when it's all done, we're gonna put some chopped walnuts and drizzle of olive oil. So what I've gone ahead and done is we got a bowl, and I have a, a sieve here that kind of sits on the bowl. Um, and what we're gonna do, I'm gonna let Michelle tell you what we have here. Okay, here we have 2% yogurt. It's a 750 milliliter tub. You can use, if you like, 1% or no fat or Balkan style, whatever you like. And then you just have to drain it to make sure all the liquid comes out. So what I'm going to do, just to make it little, so I don't lose a lot of the yogurt, um, is I'm going to line my sieve with some kitchen towel. Michelle, can you go ahead and pour the tub in there? So basically we want to drain all the, all the way, all the liquid, until this comes like really, really thick. So there we go, and just leave it. This has to be put aside. So this has to be set aside now, and we're going to let the, the water drain out of it. Every so often you can give it a shake, and this is why I put the paper towel as well. You can uh, make sure that it's going down. You can use a spoon to 
kind of coax it down. So this is going to go, and we're going to set that aside. All right, now, Michelle, what do we have here? There we have a grated cucumber. It's about one whole grated cucumber. Mm -hmm. and then Peeled. Oh, peeled and grated. Mm -hmm. And then with the cucumber, we're just going to drain the water off of that. Mm -hmm. And we also have four garlic cloves, finely minced, mm -hmm. and that goes in as well. Okay. So you want to get, again, the liquid out of the cucumber. So again, your kitchen towel comes in handy. And you just make a little package. I hope you guys can see this. Again, I am on my desk after all. And you're going to just squeeze. As you can see, a lot of liquid. Cucumber, there's a lot of liquid. Squeeze and squeeze. And keep going. Don't macerate it. Don't, you know, really, really push push too hard. You can change the kitchen towel if it gets too wet. But just get all of that. Look at all the liquid that's come out of here. And that's really good, actually, for you if, if you want to drink this. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So Michelle and I will be back. We're going to let our yogurt sit and drain. Yes. And then we're going to assemble the salad. And in the meantime, we're going to start with our other salad, Shopska Salata. And another thing I want to mention, sorry about my voice change in the last segment there. We don't know what happened there, and we weren't going to redo the video because we had already rolled those kebab cheese. All right, so we'll be right back. Ciao. Hi, everyone. We're back with our Shopska Salata, or the beginnings of it. Michelle, what did we do in here? Okay, we have four large tomatoes chopped in there. We also have one and a half cucumbers that we peeled and seeded. Nice and you can you, you can use an English cucumber if you don't want to de-seed it, but this is what we're working with, peeled cucumbers. And then we also have the Italian flat leaf parsley in there. Mm -hmm. There's also apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and some salt in there. Mm -hmm. And later on, we'll be grating some feta cheese on top. Right, and there's one element. Um, the, the parsley is optional. It's not really traditional. I just like it. In the macadonsco salad, they put it. And, an, and a little bit of a twist, what we're doing is we're grilling. Thanks, Michelle. You can take that. Thank you. We're grilling in the grill pan some um, hot banana peppers. And we're going to get some nice um, grill marks, some scorching. We're going to peel these. One of these will be chopped up and put into our salad, and the rest will be as our side, our luti piparki, which we're going to put with loads and loads of minced garlic, parsley, and beautiful olive oil, and then you dip your bread into that. You looking forward to that, Michelle? Oh, very, very much. <laughs> so we're going to show you what um, this all looks like. We have our tarotour draining. Yes. And our kebabchi is where? It's in the freezer, which you should be taking. Chilling out, which we're going to take out, and we're going to start. All right, we'll see you guys in just a bit. Ciao. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for sticking with us. Um, I just wanted to show you one of our sides, which is going to be our luti peparki, um, hot peppers. These are banana peppers. Um, and I just wanted to show you, it, when you go to a restaurant in Macedonia, you can order them by quantity. You'll say one, two, three, how many pieces you want. And they usually come in these really cute, cool little clay pots. And if you watched my video on tafte grafce, this is also what they would serve a single sizing, uh, single serving of tafte grafce in. And they would actually keep these right on the grill to keep them warm. In here, you can also add apple cider vinegar if you wanted. I personally just like it with the with the olive oil. So I have my trusty sidekick. Michelle, Michelle, why don't you have a seat and tell us what you've done with our peppers. Okay, with these peppers we've grilled them until they've got all blistery and black and what we did was take the skin off of them and then we layered them in this dish with some garlic, olive oil and parsley. And, and sea salt. And sea salt and then you just keep layering it one by one until you get to the top and then they'll marinate in their nice little garlic and oil. And then and the, the, the garlic and the oil really adds, like the, the oil will turn really nice garlicky flavor. As you can see, there's lots of oil in there. And then you can dip your bread in there because these are really hot, are they? We, we, yes. we tried one. And we <laughs> did put um, one of the, two of these actually in our Shopska Salata as well. Yes. Okay, so we will come back when we're going to probably when the kebab cheese are ready to go on the grill, aren't they? Yes, that's right. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. Bye. 
Hey, I just wanted to do a little quick update. The girls are in the kitchen um, talking and having a couple of drinks, and I'm just waiting for my Tata Tour to um, lose all of its liquid. I've already actually had to dump this once, <clears throat> and you can see there is already more liquid. I just wanted to come back to show you the texture. It's almost like a cheese, really. Whoops, don't want to drop that. It's almost like a cheese, like almost like a cream cheese. Before I was telling you that we call this a salad in Macedonia, and it is considered a salad or a starter, um, especially on hot days, it really cools you down. It's really rich. You don't need a lot of it. Um, in Macedonia, it depends on where you go. Sometimes they'll serve you a big bowl of it, and other times it's a smaller bowl. But here's a hint. If you find this too rich, you can make this and put it on top of your pizza, like when the pizza's cooked, um, or dip your crust in it. It's really, really good with pizza. This is pretty much done, um, almost there. there. There are still lots of liquid in here, but I just wanted to come back to show you the texture. It's almost like um, a, a fresh cheese. Right, so that's the Tarotura where we're at there, and next thing, kebabcina on the grill. Hey everyone, we've put our kebab chinas on a grill pan for the sake of this demonstration so I can show you in this room. So what I've done is, um, you can see there's like grill marks. And at this point, um, on your barbecue or on your um, charcoal grill, you can start just tossing them about. Because you want to get them brown all around, on all sides. So I'm just going to continue doing these. Um, we're going to keep them warm in the meantime because we're not... Um, serving people in a restaurant we all want to eat together so we're going to keep these warm in the oven and um, everything will come together in the end um, just keep them moving keep them browned they don't take long to cook because they're small and we'll see you in just a little bit hello welcome back we are doing the kebab chuck right now in a grill pan on top of your stove but traditionally it's also done over a coal grill or you can also do it on a barbecue and they're called kebab china, not kebab chop. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. And we've already put the seasoning in when we mix the meat. But if you can go to any one of your grocery stores, they'll have a pre-mixed package. And it looks like this by a company by the name of Font. And everything, the seasoning is all in the package for you. And on the back of it, it'll tell you how much meat for each package. So if you want to make a bigger patch or a smaller batch, then you can just accordingly adjust it with your seasoning package. That's Michelle. She's always reading packages. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how we start off the kebab china. And Michelle, I think this is what, our third batch now yes. that we're doing? So as you can see, they're just starting. I took them off the heat, so they're going to need some more time to brown up. But as I showed you in the other video, um, grill them till they have grill marks, and then you can start moving them about and mixing them around. In Macedonia, they'll be um, in little kind of like out popped out windows. The restaurant will have a popped out window with the grill on it. So you can actually see them with their big long tongs and they're flipping and tossing the kebab china. So, like I said, we're doing these in batches, so in the meantime, we're keeping them warm. But I just wanted to um, thank Michelle for mentioning the spice mix, because that's a great tip. Thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. I just want to show you our Taratur salad is done. And as you can see, it's really thick. Thick, almost like cheese. So my lovely friend, Michelle, who's been helping me out, and our other friend who's in the kitchen taking care of the kebab china right now, um, and she also helped us out a lot tonight. But Michelle, why don't you tell us and our friends who are watching how we made Taratur. Okay, first thing that we did is we took the yogurt and we put it in a strainer with some paper towel, and we waited a while until it got all drained out and it got nice and thick for us. And after that, we had gotten the cucumber, which we squeezed all the extra liquid out of it, mix that in with the yogurt and then we put the minced garlic in mix it thoroughly and then we sprinkle the top with the walnuts and drizzle some really nice olive oil on top and a little pinch of salt and a little pinch of salt 
and that's it like I said this may not look like a salad to you it's a starter an appetizer um, it's a palate refresher um, the garlic that you add is up to you the amount of cucumber oh which we meant to mention we, I think we we made too much cucumber that's right we only used half of what because this really reduces down doesn't it it does a lot when, yes. I, when the liquid comes out it was like probably reduced by really at least, third. at least at least if not more so um, go ahead with that one tub of 750 750 milliliters. mils yeah um, go ahead with half a cucumber to start if you're gonna use two of them then use the whole cucumber but that's fine I mean the cucumber we can just eat because it's still good that's right <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're almost done guys thank you for hanging in thank you Michelle and we'll be right back Hi everyone, our Macedonian meal is done. I just want to show you all of the elements. So we have our big, huge <laughs> tray of kebab china here, um, which we've kept warm in the oven. We have some, of course, nice, beautiful, um, crusty bread. So I'm just gonna hand this off to Michelle, if you don't mind, Michelle. Okay. It's heavy, careful. Okay. And she's gonna put that in the kitchen. Um, <clears throat> we have our Shopska Salata, which you can see is <coughs> covered in, um, sorry for the noise, covered in shredded feta cheese, um, a few olives for garnish, and some parsley. Next we have our Taratur salad. Um, traditionally also kebab china is served with a side of chopped onion but we're gonna go ahead with green onion because we all like green onion so we're gonna go ahead with the scallion today instead and last but certainly not least is our grilled peppers our luti peparki so now we have our Macedonian di uh, dinner all together um, the fries are ready the chips so the meal will be all put together and I'm just gonna show you the last plate and I really thank you all for hanging in I know this was kind of like a double bill well actually a triple bill because we did like three dishes tonight I hope you all try this I hope you enjoy it it's well worth the effort really well worth the effort it's a very homey taste and it so reminds me of the streets of Skopje especially in the old town so um, bon appetit and dobra jadenia um, and enjoy our kebab china so Shopsko Solata i so taratar i nogu peparki luti luti peparki. Again, if you don't like hot peppers, please use sweet peppers. We'll just show you how it's plated up. Have a good night and thank you so much for joining us. Hi everyone, welcome back. We're done. This is Michelle's plate. She's ready to dig in, so I don't want to keep her too long before it gets too cold. Um, <clears throat> a standard number in Macedonia is desit. 10 kebabchi, some chips, which she can probably put some ketchup in mayo if she wants. We have our shopska salata, she has her hot pepper. Um, she's gonna go ahead and have her green onion scallion. Um, we have a side of the taratur and some nice crusty bread. And we have a traditional little salt and um, hot chili pepper flake dip that in Macedonia is traditional to dip your kebab china in here and savor it or you can put a little pile on your plate it's up to you so Michelle it looks fantastic I and thank it you smells wonderful thank you I just want to thank you for helping me out tonight oh you're very welcome and um, so I, I hope you learned a lot I learned a lot and it was a wonderful cooking experience it was fun um, it's well worth the trouble don't you think oh my god more than what we're I think so yeah. so Michelle wants to go eat her meal so thank you again follow Nugu follow Nugu Michelle and we'll see you guys next time on uh, another uh, installment of my memories of Macedonia so have a good night enjoy and we'll see you soon <laughs>